I want to uh, thank our uh, presenter today, Kyle Joliff here from Toronto, Canada, Ontario. Uh, Kyle is no uh, stranger to the Wichita Postcard Club. He was, uh, he's been here for one of our shows several years ago, and uh, we're just uh, happy to have him. I've been uh, become a member of the Toronto Postcard Club uh, oh, in the last few months, and uh, well, I guess he's going to be giving a program for them too on something else in the near future. But uh, Kyle is a, a collector of uh, New York City postcards, and he found quite a few when he came to Wichita, and uh, we were pleased about that. And I'm sure the dealers were pleased too to have this guy wanting, he buys New York City. And so we know that he's selective and he looks for good stuff and it's uh, uh, fun to have him here. Uh, Kyle presented at our September meeting, you'll remember on the uh, Art Deco of New York City, the Empire State Building and the uh, Rockefeller Center and all in that area. So uh, Kyle, we're delighted to have you today. He's going to talk on the New York World's Fair. Let's see, his title is A Trip to the 1939-1940 New York World's Fair, Seven Zones of Excitement Guaranteed. Take it away, Kyle, and we're happy to have you. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Hal, for the invitation to speak today. The 1939 to 1940 New York World's Fair cards are a special part of my collection. The fair was a grand exhibition featuring um, American governments, uh, local, provincial, and state, um, the American federal government, uh, many American corporations, um, foreign governments. It really was um, an extraordinary event over two years. Showcase science, technology, and design, the things that helped bring America out of the stark days of the Depression. And it also had an eye on um, what the world of tomorrow would look like. And I also like these cards because they're often of very high quality. Um, and they, they really tell um, an amazing story of, of technological change. Yes, the postcards from the world tomorrow, a trip to the 1939 to 1940 New York World's Fair, seven zones of excitement guaranteed. And we'll find out shortly what those seven zones were. Here's a, a lovely large letter linen by the Kurt Tight Company, greetings from New York World's Fair. So here's a, a quote from official New York World's Fair pamphlet. And Hal, if you can unmute yourself, I'm going to have Hal read this, playing the role of Grover Whalen. Grover Whalen was... Uh, publicity guru in New York City in the 19, 1930s and 1940s. And he was the president of New York, 1939 New York World's Fair um, Incorporated, the group that planned and ran the, ran the um, World's Fair. Take it away, Hal. Take it away, Grover. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, take it away, Grover. Yeah. Not Sesame Street, Grover. No, no. <laughs> the eyes of the fair are on the future not in the sense of peering toward the unknown or attempting to foretell the events of tomorrow and shape of things to come, but in the sense of presenting a new and clearer view of today in preparation for tomorrow. A view of the forces and ideas that prevail as well as the machines. To its visitors, the fair will say, here are the materials, ideas, and forces at work in our world. These are the tools with which the world of tomorrow must be made. They are all interesting and much effort has been expended to lay them before you in an interesting way. Familiarity with today is the best preparation for the future. Okay, thanks Grover. Here's a lovely poster. Uh, featuring the Trilon and the Parasphere at the center of the fairgrounds, which uh, were pre reproduced on countless numbers of ephemera for the fair. This is a, a lovely Kurt Teich postcard. It's a painting of the 
um, architectural models that um, together comprise the fair in the um, lower right-hand corner area is the transport zone up towards the top right-hand corner is the amusement area. And then on the um, far top left-hand corner is the uh, American Pavilion and the Court of States and the Fountain of the Lagoon of Nations. Really a, a huge number of pavilions um, and things to do and see for any of the fairgoers who went there. Here's a, a nice real photo postcard of the uh, Parisphere and Trilon um, at the center of the fairgrounds. Um, inside the Parisphere was a model city of tomorrow that visitors for a 25 cent admission fee um, viewed from a moving walkway high above the floor level reached by a high ramp. Ah, one of my favorite, lin favorite comic linens from the fair. I don't think fair goers actually arrived uh, this way. We'll see, we'll see in the next few slides how they did arrive. Um, this is the cash register that marked the daily attendance. Um, you'll see it, it's showing 206,453 people that day. Several variations of this card, all lovely. Uh, so some came by car. Uh, the Hotel Martinique card on the left um, advertised both the hotel and how people could travel by car, such as going um, uh, using the Lincoln Tunnel coming from New Jersey or the Holland Tunnel, and then uh, taking the Queens Tunnel uh, across to Flushing where the fair was. Um, on the right is um, a map uh, showing how people could cross um, into New York City for the fair. And in this case, crossing through the George Washington Bridge and of course, if, if you had more money, you could take the airplane and, and uh, arrive at the newly opened LaGuardia Field Airport. Uh, the two cards here are by uh, Harry Bauman Inc., part of a, a wonderful series of about 25 or 26 cards, uh, all linen cards featuring um, airport buildings and uh, various airplanes. Um, the airplane on the right-hand side is a uh, Lockheed Lodestar that was operated by TransCanada Airlines, uh, now Air Canada. The card on the right is of the um, Hotel New Yorker Aviation Terrace, and that's from the time when um, it really was a special event to go to the air, to go to an airport and see planes um, landing and taking off. And you could certainly do it in comfort, um, having a lovely meal in the in the Hotel New Yorker Aviation Terrace. And some, of course, came by train. There were package deals um, for fare goers, you know, that would include uh, transportation and accommodation in New York City. Many hotels advertised uh, on postcards to attract uh, fair goers. And of course, by bus, um, Greyhound um, had its um, fair trans transcontinental bus timetable to the New York Fair and also to the parallel exhibition in San Francisco, the Golden Gate International Exhibition the same year. Some people managed to see both. Here's a, a lovely hotel card, a map card that once people got to the Governor Clinton by train or bus or car or plane, they could uh, reach the fair, fairgrounds in two ways. They could take the IRT subway or they could take the uh, Long Island Railroad and um, exit at the stations on the fairgrounds. Uh, all, all very cheap, just for five cents or a dime. Can't beat that deal. So the fair had seven different um, zones. Um, which surrounded the theme center, the government zone, the community interest zone, the food zone, the, the communications and business system zone, the production and distribution zone, the transportation zone, the amusement zone. And we'll see various postcards um, from these zones. Of course, I have my favoritism as to national pavilions. Here's the Canadian pavilion, which quote featured, featuring an architectural style typical of such a young and virile country. This is the British pavilion with the Italian pavilion in the background. And insets are pictures of the King and Queen in England who came to visit the fair in 1939. Part of the um, uh, Miller Art Company Blue Borders series, um, which produced many, many fine cards, uh, highly collectible. And of course, the United States government building done in an Art Deco style uh, with statues on the exterior. Uh, again, a, another Kurt type card. Um, so here's a, an advertising card from one of the um, 
state pavilions. Well, I, I know Puerto Rico is not a state, but it's similar to a state. Um, advertising its various products. Here's the New England exhibit, a, a litho card by the Grinnell Company. Um, the final design of the, the final um, version of this didn't quite look what's look like what's pictured here, but it's still a, a wonderful, um, lively card. Here's a, a nice real photo card of the French French Pavilion. The the French Pavilion had a lasting effect on New York cuisine in that uh, the French went big, and had their best chefs come over uh, for a restaurant inside the pavilion. And many and some of those chefs stayed on in New York City um, to open um, distinguished 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 French cuisine restaurants. Um, here's a linen view of the Lagoon of Nations from the air at night. Another Kurt type card. Uh, here's um, a, a linen stunner, as that term is used by a uh, in Don Preziosi's book, uh, Don and Mel Melody Pre Preziosi's book. Um, the Lagoon of Nations fountain and flames display really didn't look quite like this at night, but um, still a wonderful, vibrant card. Uh, how to treat a, a, a discrete subject? Well, I think this card by the X-Flax company does it quite well. And this was in the, the Hall of Pharmacy, I think in the Consumer Products Zone. Um, another Blue Border series card, the Contemporary Arts Building, which featured works by living American artists. And of course, uh, religion was not uh, lost in the midst of all the Ferris hoopla. Here's the Temple of Religion Pavilion. And again, um, from the same comic series as we saw where the, the airplane and the woman parachuting into the fair. Um, this is in the, the food pavilion area. It's not easy to portray people's faces on um, linen cards, but uh, this does it quite well. Uh, here's the Heinz Dome, another landmark at the fair with a mural um, about food production on the outside of the building. So, the, so inside of the pavilion would have uh, no doubt showcased many different Heinz products. Uh, Elsie the cow could be found in the boudoir, in her boudoir at the Borden building. There's also a wonderful series of comic cards um, of Elsie the cow. Some of you may be familiar with those. Uh, Borden also had a, a rotating a milking machine inside the pavilion called a rotolactor where 150 cows could be milked at the same time. Uh, another uh, pavilion in the food zone, the Wonder uh, Bakery building. Um, visitors could watch Wonder, Bra Wonder Bread and Hostess Cake being baked. I'm sure some of you love Twinkies or at least maybe have in the past loved Twinkies. Next slide. Uh, communications and business system zone showcased a variety of companies and, and state-of-the-art products. IBM had a display in, inside. The Crosley car uh, did not turn out to become the car of tomorrow, but um, it's still a very interesting card. Uh, and Crosley also produced many um, home appliances as well. It's company still in business today. Another from the, one of Another card from the Blue Border series, the RCM, RCA building shaped like a radio tube introduced television products to many people. A uh, 14 ton Underwood Master typewriter was definitely big. Um, in the background is the uh, Corona Gate, one of the entrances to the fair and also the, the Trilon and the, and the Paris here. Um, a card like this shows that uh, the companies like Underwood and, and um, GM and, and, and um, Firestone in particular utilize postcards extremely effectively, um, use their best graphic artists to, to produce just, just great results. Extremely well-designed card. Uh, Firestone had a production line uh, that people could, um, could watch tires being produced. They had a similar production line at the 1933 New York Chicago World's Fair. Again, at one of the production and distribution zone companies. Uh, fluorescent lighting was introduced at the General Electric building. Um, there were many other displays inside the building of, G uh, of General Electric um, products and General Electric research. Um, there's some nighttime versions of this card that show the um, zigzag lightning bolt uh, very effectively. 
uh, the DuPont Chemistry Building, uh, part of another long series of cards. Um, you know, and these are the DuPont and Firestone. These are the Fortune 500, 500 companies that are still very much alive today. Uh, the Elgin Watch um, Building at the, at the fair, uh, Elgin Watch Company was a prominent American uh, manufacturer of watches. Um, the blue border card on the left um, and the electrical products building, a couple great Art Deco cards. Uh, people have been asking how many cards are there in the, in the blue border series. I think there's about 120. Um, and I've been able to co collect about uh, three quarters of them. It hasn't been easy. Uh, some of them were produced about the first 50 or so seem to have been produced for the first year of the fair before the fair and then the remaining 70 were produced at, after the first year and they're the harder ones to find. Uh, just a, another great linen center ad, um, advertising uh, the products of an adding machine company. Uh, this is the General Motors building um, head inside uh, the Futurama ride which was extremely popular. Uh, this is a card that was uh, produced before the fair from an architectural model. Um, an outside view of the pavilion, um, I believe produced after the building was put up showing um, one of the, the trains that General Motors made and continues to make. Uh, some of them are produced in Canada, actually. The Firestone building, I think, is, in the, is uh, on the far left corner of, of the card. So this was the Futurama ride, which was the most popular ride at the fair. The people, about 550 people at a time would sit on this conveyor uh, belt, which would uh, carry them around for about an 18 and a half minute ride. And they would look down on the city of tomorrow, this huge um, architectural model an acre in size, you know, and, and see the buildings of the future and um, the highways of the future in particular, the, the interstate um, highway, there's a great, um, video of the Futurama uh, ride that will be attached to the as a link with the um, video of this presentation on the Wichita Postcard Club YouTube site. Uh, this is a, a, a close-up view of part of the uh, Futurama exhibit, and this was also actually produced in real life. I understand that once people ex left the ride, you know, they would. Um, see a full-size version of this with uh, GM cars um, available for purchase. And here's the Chrysler building with its futuristic rocket port, um, imagining interplanetary space travel, which, which uh, did come to pass, of course, with the, the moon landing, uh, you know, and also, you know, satellites out, such as Voyager 1. Uh, the railroad exhibit building was the largest building at the fair. It featured uh, many different um, locomotive uh, locomotives on display, uh, the most modern ones. Also had a, an entertainment um, component to it. it had uh, what was called the Railroads on Parade exhibit uh, featuring, um, you know, early uh, locomotives, uh, early stories of American life. Uh, here's a, a nice blue border card of the um, amusement area. Uh, the aquacade can be seen near the top right hand corner. That was um, a uh, venue uh, entertainment uh, set up uh, by Billy Rose, who was a, a famous promoter of the time. Uh, we'll see that, uh, we'll see, that, see that in another card coming up. Uh, here's a nighttime view of the amusement area at night. So this would have been, you know, produced, uh, I think, before the fair, but it's still, um, you know, a lovely, um, vivid card and a good example of why the uh, blue border cards are, are so collectible. They seem to have a little more glossy finish to them, which which gives them a, a nicer look to them. Uh, this is a close-up view of the Fountain Lake Amphitheater with Billy Rose's Aquacade, Aquacade on stage. Uh, it's another Kurt Tight card. Um, here's a really nice, I think it's a Ticknor card, one of about five or six of the Aquacade and showing synchronized swimming and also a um, theater presentation on the, on the stage. Um, the parachute jump on the left, um, 
that still that still exists, uh, but it was moved to Coney Island. I don't think it works anymore, but you can see it at Coney Island. Um, the card on the right is one of two cards of ad advertising Mayflower Donuts. As you ramble on through life, brother, whatever be your goal, keep your eye upon the donut and not upon the hole. So the Mayflower Donuts were a, a quite popular uh, donut chain in, in the New York City area. And here uh, from the Children's World in the amusement area, um, a souvenir from a trip around the world in the Gimbal's Flyer. Uh, one of my favorite cards, the Hermione's Midget Band. So there, there was uh, Morris Guest, who was another promoter, had what was called, um, um, it was Midget Town or Little People's Town, um, I think, which was a popular um, exhibit. So um, this is the last card in my presentation, but it, it's a good way to end because um, the fair portrayed the, the world of tomorrow that was to come, but unfortunately the world of tomorrow was, was interrupted by the Second World War. And you know, the fair opened in, in, the, in mid um, 1939, but the war clouds were on the horizon. So you'll see the red sticker, it says mail via SS Brayman. And the postcard date is August the 11th. And that's particularly interesting because I believe that was the last um, outbound trip from New York to Germany that the Bremen, one of the most famous ocean liners of, of the era, uh, made. And it's just a card sent by somebody to his aunt and uncle in Germany saying that he's sending them, you know, some green coffee that needs to be roasted and uh, sent hopes to hope that they'll get it by the 16th and you know wishes them well the the fair um the fair had to make changes the second year because um some some pavilions uh, left because of the war situation the soviet pavilion only lasted one year um, so it's, it's just a it's just an interesting counterpoint to the world of tomorrow i mean the world of tomorrow did come in terms of you know modern appliances and the use of electricity everywhere and, and the interstate system becoming finished and, and um, really being a huge, hugely productive part of American life. But um, the war did interrupt things. So um, that's my presentation. People have been asking about the, the price range for these cards. Um, they can be anywhere from a couple dollars US, uh, you know, up into the $30 US odd range. Um, it, it, um, the harder ones command, the harder, the harder to find ones command more money, but there's still um, many in, inexpensive cars to, cars to be found. So over time, if you choose to, to collect this, um, co collect cards from this particular World's Fair, you can build up quite a nice collection. You just have to have patience and, and uh, keep working at it. So that's the end of my presentation questions. Oh, great, Kyle. Thank you very, very much. Oh, you're most welcome. And uh, let's get Bill Burton to unmute himself and we'll see what uh, questions he has uh, there in the chat room, please. Thanks, Hal. Um, several questions, uh, one or two of which have been answered, but let me just begin from the top. Um, Jerry Denley says, uh, I, I heard that the television was uh, first shown at this fair. Is that true? That's correct. Yeah. The people, there was a television studio in, in, I think, the GE building and also the RCA building. Um, GE and RCA were, were connected companies. And people could uh, you know, see themselves on television. I think the first broadcast um, was also made from the New York, New York World's Fair as well. Oh, OK. Um, Hal Ottaway threw in a, a, a good point. Uh, he said pinbacks were made uh, uh, for one day events. Pinbacks uh, being buttons you'd, you'd wear on your, your coat or your jacket. Um, and do you have any idea about these? Oh, oh I, I've seen those. You know, there were special, to, to boost attendance, there were special days, you know, Scouts Days or I guess American National Insurance Underwriting Association or, you know, so there's all there's all kinds of, ribbons and buttons and ephemera there's just a, an absolutely vast array of of ephemera and, and you can go on ebay and 
and get a sampling of that. Okay. The, the, the GM building had a button saying, I have seen the future. You know, and, and so next question. Okay, Jenny Michaels uh, and, and actually Hal Holloway too uh, asked uh, Kyle if there's a checklist of the blue border cards. You said you bear about 120, but have you done it or do you know anybody else who's done any checklist? I, I, I don't know anyone who's put together a checklist. Um, if anyone's interested in doing that, they can contact me and I can contribute the numbers that I have, the numbers and titles. Okay. Um, Mary Lund wanted to know about the, uh, the prices, price range, but I think you sort of answered that, but did you want to elucidate about the, the range of, uh, or, or what certain areas of cards uh, have for prices? Um, certain, certain, the blue border cards um, above, above about a number 160 will command maybe $10 and up. Uh, under that, they're, they're less than $10. Uh, those are, are harder to find, and a lot of people like to collect those. Um, the um, maybe some some real photo cards will will do will do better. Um, there's one card for that somebody wants thirty seven dollars Canadian for that I keep wanting to buy but still holding off. So it seems that's a little too high in, in the price range, I think. So okay, and Jenny Michaels. Uh... Uh, remarked that the British Pavilion apparently had a plaque for the men who were killed uh, defusing bombs. I don't quite get that point, but what is it? Well, is the, that something the, the, that the, the pavilions did? Yeah, I mean, the, I, I, I expect that's true. I know that the British Pavilion displayed uh, one of the mines that the Germans had planned. I mean, if, if you're being attacked, you know, it, it's reasonable to point to your point to your point out your enemy. You know, I think we. Um, so the the British Pavilion, you know, continued into the Second War, and and obviously that was a difficult situation, just like at the Czechoslovakian Pavilion. You know, Czech, Czechoslovakia had been occupied. So um, it's just the. It's just if you've got a story to tell, you know. You're you're going to tell it as directly as possible sometimes, and and that's what happens when you're at war. Okay, it's propaganda. Jared Delaney asked, uh, "How many of the buildings from the fair are still standing?" Um, I think the the New York City building may still be standing. I think it could be the aquarium, the New York City aquarium. Now I'm not positive. Um, at one time it was the temporary United Nations headquarters, I think, but I think. Um, Almost all of them are, are otherwise gone. They were they were temporary buildings, generally. The the Aquacade um, amphitheater lasted for a long time, but that's gone. Some of the buildings were repurposed. The build the the Belgium Belgian Pavilion, I think, ended up at a university in in West Virginia. They disassembled it and took it down there. I, I believe that's the case. I believe that's the story with the Belgian Pavilion. Wow. Yeah, uh, so. Katie Clark uh, said it's uh, that's that stuff is, is pretty cool. I have a bunch of these cards, uh, but there are some here that I've never seen. Um, is that what you did? You do that deliberately just to throw curves at everybody? Well, no. I I I'm a passionate collector, <laughs> you know. So so I spent a long time traveling around and, and accumulated the hard to find ones. Ah, okay. Ann Peck asks, what, is, what was the company and the artist that did the LaGuardia cards? I think you mentioned that. that mentioned. That's Harry Bauman, Harry Bauman Inc. How do you spell that? Uh, B-A-U-M-A-N-N. Oh, okay. Um, and she goes on to say, the first broadcast from the fair was a speech by Franklin Roosevelt. Does that... I don't know whether Ann, whether you meant that as a television or, or radio. No, that's that's the television first television broadcast. Oh, okay, that's correct. That was Franklin Roosevelt live. Yeah, yes, that would have been Franklin Roosevelt live. Oh, okay. Um, and Jerry Delaney, uh, Nedley suggests asked uh, who published the Blue series. I, you mean Blue Back, I guess. Or Blue yeah, the, what what people call the Blue Border series. That's the Miller Art Company. Oh, okay. But I, um, I think they were they were doing that in conjunction with the Ticknor company in the background because um, the the cards 
those particular cards are much better quality than a lot of the Miller Art Company stuff. Okay, um, I think we're getting to the end here. Leslie Phillips said, uh, and and so did Katie Clark said, uh, buy it. I think she was referring to the uh, one of the blue borders, but I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, or maybe so it was the one that you said that was so expensive, thirty-seven dollars Canadian. Oh, uh, the thirty-seven dollar card. Yeah, I I know I should buy it. I've just been <laughs> just just been holding off. So <laughs> just been holding off. It, it's um uh, it's a card that shows the Italian pavilion in the background and, and it's a wine company card for Scatty um for Scatty wine company. So I've given it away. Maybe somebody will jump me jump the gun on and buy it instead. So <laughs> maybe it's still there. Asked, uh, uh, says there's a launching Wittenauer watch poster stamp uh, of a building at the at the Museum of Natural History in New York. Uh, do you know if there's a, a card that pictures that building? Uh, the Longines? Yeah. yeah. At the World's Fair? I get the feeling that's what she meant, yes. Um, I haven't seen it. I mean, there's some cards were produced in small numbers, so I haven't haven't seen them. I have um, I have many, I have, you know, three or four hundred New York City World. 1939 World Fair cards, but you know, can't ha I can't can't have them all. I don't live in New York City. <laughs> ah. so. uh, Leslie Phillips uh, writes: uh, Some folks are trying to recreate some of the uh, art. I'm not sure whether she means uh, reprint or or exactly what. No, I just I actually just acquired like ten uh, New York World's Fair cards last weekend, and I was it made me wonder what happened to all that stuff. And when I was trying to find out what happened to the buildings and everything, I ran across this website, I posted the link that there are some people that are trying to recreate some of the statues, the statuary that was there and the murals. They, um, I don't remember the exact details now, but they, they, in some instances, they found like original plans or castings or whatever and have reproduced some of it. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a fascinating uh, topic, actually. There was um, a statue by a famous Black uh, sculptor, Black woman who lived in Harlem. I've forgotten her name. Um, but she she couldn't afford to do a bronze casting of a statue. So it was sort of um, in a temporary form at, at, the, at the fair, which was destroyed afterwards. Um, so, and... and there's some wonderful cards, especially in the Blue Border series of, of all the various um, uh, statues, many of an, uh, an Art Deco style. If you go on um, the Wichita Postcard Club site and look at my presentation last um, September, you'll see a number of cards from the New York, 1939 New York World's Fair with uh, uh, statues from with statues on them. Okay. Katie Clark has an interesting idea. She said about the $37 card. Um, should we start a GoFundMe account for you on this? No, no, no it, it, it's okay. It's okay. I, be, I Maybe I'll grab it right away. <laughs> uh, Kyle, have you ever seen a, a sculpture by Jose D. Rivera? It, it's still out at the uh, fair. Uh, not familiar with that one. It, I may have seen it on, on a card. I, I tend not there's a lot of mural cards of the fair, but they're sort of in this um, unattractive black and white format and, and um, they've never really appealed to me or seemed worth the money to buy them. So I, I, has it. yeah, the cards that I acquired last weekend are all black and whites. Um, some of them are real photo and some of them are are not, but they look like they're reproduced from the a real photo original, and like, he, and I just love them. I, I really, I don't know if these are the ones you're talking about, but yeah, there's a there's a linen version of, of that card. It, it's speed. I think I have that in in the Art Deco presentation. Yeah, but I really like the black and white ones, even the ones that aren't real photo. They're just uh, they've got a um, a clarity to them. Yeah, so, that so I the, find the, attractive. There's a lot of, uh, of public art that was uh, a key part of the exhibition. I just really didn't, didn't have time to focus on it, but um, they particularly show up well in, in 
in the Underwood um, real photo cards. Yeah. Uh, but there's just a, just some some wonderful statuary that um, that could be found, you know, through, throughout the throughout the fairgrounds. Um, and like in the, I'm not sure if we can go back to the, can we go back to the British card, Alan? So the British Pavilion had these lions at the on the front of the pavilion that kind of had a an, an English Art Deco feel to it. Um, so the yeah, there's there's lots of great statuary uh, that's waiting to be to be rediscovered from the fair. Uh, it it just really was um, an important um, cultural event. Um, and, and I prefer it very much to, to the uh, 1964 World, New York World's Fair on the same site. So. Well, while we're waiting for the pictures to show up, Ann Peck said uh, there was a bomb placed in a satchel at the British Pavilion in 1940. Police went in to investigate, the bomb exploded, and they were killed. True? Yeah, yeah, that's a, a tragic event that I don't think it was ever solved. And, you know, so they couldn't, they couldn't, um, um, escape that. I don't know what's on the site now. Somebody's asking. Um, yeah, you can't, it, it, they're difficult to see, but in, in between the, the flags, um, there's two blue flags with the Italian pavilion in the background. There's some small lions just kind of on the edge of the pool. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so they, they, um, they're, they, they're a very distinctive piece of, of British statuary. You know, and there was also a huge uh, Soviet pavilion um, with a lot of um, kind of over the top um, propaganda stuff. At least that's how I felt feel about it. Yeah. So yeah, that gives you a better view of, of the of those two lions that flank the uh, the main entranceway. Yeah. So so the fair offered uh, offered a great deal of interesting things to to visitors. You know, whether whether they were looking for a great meal or or interesting amusement rides or um, oh who, who's that's who's uh, on top of the building the figure seated figure um you have to you, we'd have to see that slide again oh um Victoria just um hold on a second I I have that that card elsewhere. That is the is the goddess Roma. Oh, Roma, goddess Roma. That's a a better version. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And this is uh, an Albertite card, actually. There are not many Albertite cards at this one. Yeah. So, so I I really um I really like this topic. There's so many great cards and and so many interesting aspects of. Uh, not just American culture, but you know, foreign culture. There were some countries that didn't participate, such as Germany. But um, the countries that did participate, you know, made a a, a big effort. Any more questions? One more, yes. Uh, Leslie Phillips says, "What's on the site now?" Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, there may be some remnants from the um, 1964 New York World's Fair. Like I think there was a big globe. Um, at at the fair at the 1964 fair that that um, may still be there, but maybe some New Yorkers can answer the question. Susan, the Unisphere is still there. Um, it's now Flushing Park. Um, the New York exhibit. The New York exhibit, like from um, what's that? That was a Will Smith movie and with the aliens, Men in Black. Um, the science thing with the rockets is still there. The Queens Museum is in the, I think, the United States Pavilion. Um, soccer fields. Well, yeah, and there's a lot of soccer fields and whatnot still there. Yeah, so it still has a, a, a public use to it. And was, was there a Kodak slideshow of the fair? Uh, no, but I think Kodachrome was was introduced there. I think that's pretty much it for the comments that have uh, come along. 
Uh, but this may set a record, Hal, for the number of comments uh, for any any show that I've seen. I think we're on a roll. We have uh, good people and good uh, presentations and a nice audience. We thank everybody for coming. Really appreciate Kyle being our second or the presenter that's given two now. And uh, we'll look for a third one someday down the road. I wanted to thank Bill Burton for all his work. Uh, in helping with the questions afterwards. Isn't it neat, by the way, that Kyle's collecting World's Fair postcards. I mean, he has been for years, but that is a topic that you don't hear a lot about if you go to a postcard show. And I think it's wonderful. And, you know, a lot of times a, uh, a topic like that, or it might be covered bridges, or it might be... You know, Niagara Falls someday, you never know. But you get a group together of cards and uh, it can be pretty exciting all over again. So thanks for everyone for coming and we really appreciate being here and seeing you here.